Welcome to Virtualize Everything. So today I had a rather interesting experience and I was prepping out my server for a TrueNAS video where I picked up a SAS controller and I was going to add a number of drives to it and pass the SAS controller through with PCI pass-through. In adding the PCI controller into the system and booting up, I found that my local LVM drive wasn't working and really had no information. I wanted to take you through the process today of what I discovered and show you some of the commands I used for that discovery, knowing that this drive was an LVM drive, of course, being that it's labeled LVM. I was able to turn to the command prompt here, and you can see I'm issued a number of commands where I started with FS tab here, and I viewed FS tab to see if I had any good information on booting. Knowing about the UUID, I was assuming that we were maybe specifying a different drive name or something with UUID originally. And that didn't turn out anything fruitful for information. So then I turned to the forums and got reading a little bit more and ultimately ended up turning to chat GPT where I could ask questions to get this final answer. And I wanted to make a video of it to show you some of the process I went through here hoping that maybe somewhere on YouTube this might help somebody later on down the road that's experiencing the same thing. So I found out about this command called VGS. And what VGS does is it displays all the VGs on the drive. And initially, right after issuing it, you can see I got a nice warning here that I had two UUIDs that were tied to the same VG name. And what had happened here in a little bit more digging is that one of the drives I added had been used for Proxmox in the past, and it also had a name of PVE for a VG name. So now I was in a situation where I had two separate drives here in the same Proxmox server that both had the same PVE name, and the system was confused. It didn't know what was going on. And you can see here they had drastically different sizes, but they didn't really compare a one terabyte size just like this drive has, which this, by the way, is that extra drive. It does not compare to my storage disk which is actually showing up here from yet another disk that was on that system it should have been just plain pve um if we go back to my console here so anyways it wasn't showing up for the drive my storage drive actually if i look at it here oh these are all my drives here but my storage drive, the one that's tied to this storage location, is a three terabyte drive, and it's located here. These are the four that I added in that you're seeing some of these conflicts come through with. And SDA in particular, this top one, is the one that's overriding this SSD that's right here where my local LVM would have been stored. So heading back to the command prompt, what was done then is just some little prodding because I didn't know the, U, the UUID that corresponded to the VG. And the way this works, this command work from my finally futzing and figuring out is it displays the VG output or the UUID output in the same path or pattern as the straight VGS command that we used to display the VGs. So this one's going to be storage, this one's going to be PVE, and this one's going to be PVE. But this middle one's going to be the 110 gig PVE, where the lower one's going to be the one terabyte VG. So then what we needed to do is pretty simple and it's telling us what's going on here that we have two UUIDs that are tied to the same VG name is actually to go ahead and issue a VG rename command followed by the UUID and then finished up with a name. So I just called it second PVE 
which gutted away from the main PVE and gave it a different name. So Proxmox would automatically recognize it as its default configuration. After that, I issued another VGS command, and you can see now we have the storage PVE, which is the default one, and second PVE here upcoming when I do the PCI pass through and the driver blocks and all of that that are going to happen, you'll see these other VGs disappear out of my system. And I'm hoping I don't have to do any cleanup, but we'll make a separate video if we do. I hope you enjoyed this video, maybe found it a little bit informational. And I know it's not a great tutorial. It's somewhat of a walkthrough and verbal explanation of what I had, but I did want to go ahead and put that content out there in case somebody else maybe one day has the same problem and needs to solve it. So with that, if you enjoyed this, if you found it informational, please consider liking, sharing, and subscribing to help us grow, and have a good night.